George R. R. Martin describes Cheap Stealer as a notably ugly mud brown dragon that hatched when the old king was still young. But clearly, appearances can be deceiving, because the dragon was one of the most loyal dragons that ever participated in the Dance of the Dragons. He may not have been the prettiest or the strongest or the biggest, but he sure knew how to ensure the safety of his rider a young 16-year-old girl named Nettles. Sheep Stealer and Nettles went on many adventures through the course of the dance, but they lived the rest of their lives away from civilization. How did that come to happen? In this video, we will explore Sheep Stealer and trace his journey through fire and blood. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. The Prelude to Sheep Stealer's Chronicle When the first men came to Westeros in the Dawn Age, they brought a few customs along with them, and the worst among these was the right of the first knight, according to which the lord of a particular place would have the right or the privilege to bed the bride on the first night of her marriage. It had started several thousand years ago when warriors slept with women in the clan so that the offspring would take after the warrior. Such children were loved even by the husband of the woman, and no one really objected to it back in the day. However, with time this changed and even the ugliest, dirtiest, and weakest of lords started taking maidens for themselves on the first night, claiming their maidenhead. When Queen Alisan learned about this, she was left aghast, and she convinced her husband, King Jeharis, to end the custom. Many lords were left fuming, but the king's decree was a king's decree, and the practice gradually died. However, that was not really the case in Dragonstone, where small folk rightly regarded Targaryens for being closer to gods than the common run of men. Naturally, the brides who were blessed by these superior men or dragon riders were envied by the other women, and the children born out of such adventures were celebrated and hailed because the wealthy Targaryens celebrated their birth with lavish gifts including but not limited to gold, silk, and land. The small folk would say the children were born of dragon seed, and eventually these children would be referred to as dragon seeds or just seeds. And even after King Jeharis ensured that the practice ended across Westeros, the Targaryens did not shy away from a little sally on the side. Therefore, there were plenty of Targaryen bastards that roamed all across Dragonstone, but why did I give this little piece of history? Well, in the book Fire and Blood, when Prince Jacaris Targaryen realizes that he has more dragons than dragon riders on Dragonstone, he urges these dragon seeds to master the unclaimed dragons, in return for which they would receive huge lands, lofty titles, and would also be anointed as knights. Furthermore, the songs of these people would be turned into nobles and their daughters would be wed to lords. And the dragon rider himself would be given the honor of riding beside the Prince of Dragonstone against the usurper Aegon II and his treasonous faction of greens, and thus began the sowing of the seeds, as Munkun called it. However, the others called it the Red Sowing. But not all those who answered Prince Jacaris's call to action were dragon seeds. Some were normal people of Dragonstone with dreams and ambitions, as big as Beleriand the Black Dread. Among the dragons that were to be claimed were Vermithor, Silverwing, and Sea Smoke, who people had previously ridden. Yet there were wild dragons such as Cannibal, Grey Ghost, and the star of our show, Sheep Stealer sheep stealer gets claimed by a young brown girl. As the name suggests, the dragon had a taste for mutton and lamb. He would come swooping down from high above, grab a sorry sheep in its claws, and fly away. The shepherds from Wendwater to Driftmark had been facing this dreadful thief, but the good part was that the dragon seldom attacked the shepherd and became violent only when someone interfered with his theft. I mean, one cannot really expect a dragon to hiss when enraged, right? It's a bloody dragon. It would engage in some fire in blood. However, Sheep Stealer did sometimes devour the sheepdogs. As far as wild dragons go, Sheep Stealer seemed like the best bet for the wannabe dragon riders. Grey Ghost was extremely hard to find because it was a super shy dragon, and no one dared to claim the cannibal simply because of how violent and dangerous the dragon was. Having said that, Sheep Stealer was an extremely ill tempered and vicious beast that killed more seeds than all three castle dragons combined that is, Vermithor, Silverwing, and Sea Smoke. Many dragon seeds went into the dragon's lair, hoping to ride upon his back. But unfortunately for all 
all these people, they ended up in Sheep Stealer's belly. Only one man walked out of there alive. Two brothers, Adam and Alan of Hall, became famous after Adam mounted Sea Smoke, the dragon of Lanor Valarian. The Valarians insisted that these two brothers were sired by Sir Lanor on a commoner woman, but rumor has it that their birth father was Corlys Valarian himself. Yes, the Sea Snake. Whatever may be the case, Aelin went into Sheep Stealer's lair hoping to claim the dragon for himself, but came out howling in pain and fear for his cloak was on fire. Sheep Stealer followed the Valarian bastard, but Adam and Sea Smoke drove Sheep Stealer away, thus saving Aelin. Although Aelin lived all his life with scars on his back and legs, he counted himself fortunate to have survived the dragon's flames. So how could one possibly claim such a terribly nasty piece of God's creation? Well, you do smart work and not hard work. So we know that Sheep Stealer loved sheep, right? A girl of six and ten named Nettles used this knowledge and turned it into something of a trick. She would offer the dragon a freshly slaughtered sheep every morning. The dragon would eat the sheep and go about his business, only to return the next day. Eventually, Sheep Stealer started expecting Nettles, and it was not long before he accepted Nettles as his rider and allowed the little brown girl on his back. And just like that, this black-haired, brown-eyed, brown-skinned, skinny and brave girl became the first and last rider of Sheep Stealer. Sheep Stealer and the War Sheep Stealer's first experience with the war when he and Nettles participated in the Battle of the Gullet. So Prince Jacares lost his younger brother to Amon and Vagar, and he feared for the safety of Aegon and Viserys, sons of Rhaenyra and Daemon. So he planned to send the children off to Pentos to be fostered by the Prince of Pentos. Aegon took his dragon Stormcloud and Viserys took his dragon egg, but the worst came to life when the Triarchy warships found the Cog Gay Abandoned, which was carrying the boys. Viserys was abducted but Aegon managed to return to Dragonstone on Stormcloud to tell the tale. Naturally, Jacarys wanted to get his younger brother back and left with the dragon seeds to the gullet. Sheep Stealer and Nettles accompanied him but Viserys could not be found. He returned much later to King's Landing when Aegon III became king and Viserys would himself sit on the Iron Throne a few decades later. A few weeks later, Rhaenyra took King's Landing. When she did that, Nettles came with Sheep Stealer and the dragon landed on Visenya's hill. But taking King's Landing did not ensure Rhaenyra's victory. The war would not be over until her half-brothers were dead and their dragons were slain. So it was decided that Prince Daemon would fly atop Caraxes and Nettles would ride Sheep Stealer to the Trident from where they would begin their hunt of Aemond One-Eye and his mighty old dragon Vagar. Every morning as the sun would come up, Sheep Stealer and Caraxes would soar high up in the sky as if trying to reach the sun from Maidenpool, they would fly over all of the riverlands in bigger and bigger circles in the hope of finding Vagar flying below them. But their hopes would shatter each time, and the two dragons and their riders would return to Maidenpool to wait for the next day's sun. Lord Manfred, Mouton of Maidenpool, suggested that the two riders should cover more ground by flying separately. But Daemon argued that Vagar was the last of the three dragons using whom Aegon the Conqueror united Westeros and brought several kingdoms to heel, and that she had become as large as Beleriand was when he died. And although she was slower than Sheep Stealer and Caraxes, Vagar was still mighty large, powerful, and resilient. It would be foolish to go against such a dreadful and gigantic beast with just one dragon. So, Daemon kept Nettles close to himself. He would fly with her during the days and spend the nights in the castle with her, but was it just Vagar that made Daemon stick close to Nettles? Well, the court jester Mushroom begs to differ and claims that Daemon had grown fond of the young girl and he would often bed her. But then others claim that Daemon had grown to love Nettles as a father loves his daughter. And although Targaryens have a thing about keeping the bloodline pure, their blood doesn't run so hot as to sleep with their daughters. Irrespective of how the two of them spent their nights, separate accounts from unrelated sources claim that they did prowl the skies during the day. However, it was well known that when Daemon was young, every inn and brothel of King's Landing knew Daemon Targaryen. And we all know the effect a girl of 16 would have on a man of 49, especially when the man in question was Daemon Targaryen, the charming Casanova. Queen Rhaenyra had no reason to doubt her armorous husband, but then something happened in the town of Tumbleton. Ulf White and Hugh Hammer, the dragon seats, had betrayed Rhaenyra and joined the Greens in the hopes of better prospects. This turned Rhaenyra paranoid and she believed that Nettles and Adam Valerian would also betray her. Furthermore, 
Missaria, better known as Lady Misery or the White Worm, was serving as the de facto master of whisperers for the Blacks, and she told the Queen that her husband was sharing the bed with Nettles. This enraged the Black Queen, and she immediately sent word to Lord Manfred Mouton, ordering him to bring Nettles to King's Landing, but she also instructed that Damon should not get wind of it. But Manfred Mouton would not allow a guest to be slain under his roof, so he sent his maester to Damon with a letter that Rhaenyra had sent. The following morning, Nettles saddled Sheep Stealer with Damon's help. They were aware that Nettles could no longer stay with him and nor could she continue serving the Queen because the latter had lost trust in Nettles. The young girl fed her dragon the largest black ram she could find in the castle, and she left Maidenpool never to return. Damon and Nettles did not share any words of farewell, but Caraxes felt the pain and let out a scream so potent that it broke all the glass windows of the castle. Nettles turned her dragon toward the Bay of Crabs and vanished into morning mists, never to be seen again at court or castle. The Years After Dance of Dragons Years later, when Aegon III became king, he sent his men to the Vale of Arryn to support the claim of Joffrey Arryn over the Vale. The men were already struggling with the savage tribes of the Vale and the rough terrain of the high mountains when something unthinkable happened. Lord Robert and his men were trying to build campfires to beat the cold when they saw a cave. A dozen men climbed up in the hopes of finding some shelter, but all they found was a dragon and his rider. The men had roused the dragon, a mistake that took the lives of some five dozen men. After the massacre, the brown dragon took flight with his rider, a ragged woman, and that was the last time Nettles was seen with Sheep Stealer, or at least that's what the recorded history of Westeros says. Marvelous Conclusion Well, Sheep Stealer may not be the biggest or the prettiest of dragons in the Dance of Dragons, but he sure was a force to reckon with, a dragon that survived the dance and ensured the safety of his rider. He was a wild dragon all his life and learned to live with nettles, but I believe he remained a wild dragon living the entirety of his life in the wilderness, amidst nature. What do you think about Sheep Stealer? If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!